I have to confess, the women are far more interesting. There's two stories that resonate more than anything, and we need to get over it because it's the absolute positive truth. Is Caitlin Clark going to win the national championship and cement her legacy as one of the greatest female college basketball players ever? I think she already has. Please don't get me wrong. But when you want to compare her or eclipse her over a Cheryl Miller, a Diana Taurasi, or a, a Brianna Stewart, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. You got to get a championship. I mean, Brianna Stewart won all four years. Diana Taurasi had three titles. Cheryl, Sw uh, I'm sorry, Cheryl Miller had two. You got to get one. Despite the fact you led in leading the nation in points and assists, averaging over 32 a game. You still need one title. Just one. So watching whether or not Caitlin Clark is going to do it, that's one storyline. You know what the other storyline is? Would they beat LSU in a rematch if they faced one another? Because that's possible. Would they beat LSU, led by Angel Reese and the crew? Would that happen? That's another possibility. And then here's the biggest possibility. I think this is the biggest story in women's college basketball, bigger than Caitlin Clark. LSU versus South Carolina. LSU versus South Carolina. Dawn Staley. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to talk about the greatness. What about Pat Summit, the late great Pat Summit? God rest her soul. Gino Oriema and what he's done. Kim Mulkey. And what she's doing at LSU, what she used to do at Baylor. She won three titles at Baylor, won one at LSU last year. Dawn Staley is undefeated in back-to-back -back seasons. Dawn Staley is like, 68 and one over the last two years. Dawn Staley is like 105 and three over the last three years. I mean, damn. And you saw how South Carolina and LSU got into it. Ladies and gentlemen, that sound right there is supposed to be a leading producer for the podcast that doesn't know how to make sure his equipment is turned off before we go to, to taping. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just embarrassing. It's just embarrassing. He's got this experience, but somehow he just embarrasses himself like that. I mean, can you believe it? But anyway, I digress. The point is, South Carolina, LSU, SEC Conference, reigning defending national champions, LSU, best team in basketball, South Carolina, led by Dawn Staley, that, to me, is more compelling than the men's game. And the women's game, let me say this because it needs to be said. The women's game has really elevated itself. And I think it's time for the rest of us all to take notice. These women, what's the reason for it? It could be Title IX. I mean, it could be names like Caitlin Clark, Andrew Reese, Juju Watkins out of USC, who's a bad sister, Cameron Brink. I mean, it could be a host of all of this stuff. But Title IX, 1972, remember that. Because you're talking about how the act mandated equitable treatment of girls and women in educational institutions that receive federal funds. And so all of a sudden, you got into a situation where what are we talking about here? We're talking about equipment. We're talking about notoriety. We're talking about all of these different things. They have it now. And the women's game, dare I say, it's more marketable and it's competitive ratings wise with the men in college basketball. Keep your eyes on this, ladies and gentlemen. This is a dramatic shift that has taken place and we can't ignore it.